we go. Good afternoon, Facebook. Oh my goodness. I am super excited. Okay. Every time I get a client, I know that like I'm super excited guys, but I have been talking to Philip for quite a while now. And if you guys like haven't known me for very long, like Philip, I am sorry. Like I have been really persistent with you to get you on this show to go ahead and talk about your business ever since we met. When did we meet? When I think a, a year ago, maybe, maybe a little less than a year ago at the, at the equip conference. That's right. Oh my goodness. So yeah. So I've been super excited and sending him messages and I'm like, I want to get you on my show. And he's like, okay, finally, like, what is this all about? <laughs> So it was super fun. And then, yeah, you came over to uh, Minneapolis and you met some more friends with your in-person networking and you're like, oh, okay, this makes sense. So, yeah. So we're just going to go ahead and jump right into this. Friends, you know the drill. Oh, we already have somebody watching. Thank you so much. If you could um just give us some hearts, some thumbs up, that just really helps out the algorithm for both of our businesses to be seen, of course, ask questions and I will be asking the questions for you because Philip cannot see the live. So um, definitely do that. That'd be super fun. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and jump right in, guys. Okay. Who is Philip and how did I meet him? I'm going to go ahead and just uh, kind of give a little bit of an icebreaker here. And then, of course, I'm going to hammer him with a whole bunch of questions. <laughs> so... Philip is the man that I have been advertising for, for February 9th and February 10th. So Meticulous Engagements is bringing a group out to his uh, Phantom of the Opera live orchestra on February 10th, 7 p.m., but he does have other shows. Um, Philip, could you just, because I'm sure you remember the dates a little bit clearer than I do, could you tell the audience of what other dates and what times those shows are at? Uh, yeah, we have uh, three shows over Valentine's weekend, uh, February 9th at 7 p.m. and February 10th at 2 p.m. for a matinee and 7 p.m. for the evening performance. It's at the Granada Theater in Uptown, Minneapolis, which is also a dinner theater. So doors open hour and a half earlier and you can get a dinner in the lobby or if you're one of the lucky ones, you can get a, a, a table in the room where the show will be, and you can have dinner while watching the, the show, The Phantom of the Opera. So it's, yeah, Granada Theater is a great uh, 1928 vintage, very nostalgic theater. It was designed to look like a castle, and inside it has this like open street, star sky atmosphere. It's very beautiful. They've been doing all those like fever, candlelit, quartet kind of kind of stuff, uh, performances there and a lot of other stuff. So really, really great venue. It's going to be perfect for the Phantom of the Opera. I'm so looking forward to this. I really am. OK, so, Philip, how did you get into this? Like, there's a lot of moving parts. And like, I want to know, like, did you go to band when you were in high school and you were interested you decide to take on like the leadership role and you're like, okay, I don't want to just play. I want to lead something like friend. Give us like the backstory a little bit of how this came into fruition. Uh, man, backstory is kind of through the back door, I guess you would say like, no, I, I'm not a band guy. I'm not even an orchestra guy. Uh, I'm a rock and roll guy. <laughs> like, and I'm barely a rock and roll guy because I'm a piano player. And so there's not a lot of room in the in the rock and roll world for a piano. I mean, you know, Elton John, Billy Joel and the piano rock guys. But uh, yeah, I, I guess like I was like the rock and roll punk rock kid in high school. Uh, I was in that scene. And then I really fell in love with film scoring at near near the end of high school. So I got into Philip Glass and and classic horror movies and uh Danny Elfman and the Corners Kronos Quartet uh Bernard Herman just a lot of like kind of horror classic horror composers and I just loved it I fell in love with the music I was I was a, a composition guy piano um playing piano my whole life 
And so I, I loved music and just orchestra music. And I thought, man, I, I want to be a film composer. Like in near the end of high school, I was just like, this is my dream to be a film composer. And school was very expensive. So I thought, well, I'll just see if I can make it on my own without school first, you know? And so I moved to Minneapolis, the, the big city. I grew up in New England, out in New Hampshire, out east. And I moved to Minneapolis on a real whim. Not, I didn't know anybody out here. And I, I started going to a small university and just kind of grabbing my education where I could get it. I got an internship at a local studio. Uh, I got offered some gigs here and there. And, and, then, I, and then I was offered uh, kind of a staff role at a local theater here in Minneapolis at like an underground uh, an underground theater. So I became a composer for this theater, writing some musicals and writing a few other things uh, and, and really got my foot in the door in the theater world as a, as a small ensemble composer, reading lots of books, just trying to pull my education from wherever I could find it. And, and then finally, um, I went to, to school for the tech side at IPR down, in downtown Minneapolis uh, there I found the Hollywood composer Bob Jenkins, and he kind of took me a little bit under my under his wing. And um, and then I I was nearing the end of my stay at IPR when I um, was simultaneously being a composer at this other theater. I, I developed my own puppet show, and this was not like a Jim Henson kind of like Muppets. It was like marionettes and like very artful. And this is the kind of theater that puppetry that, that would come through this theater. So I was inspired by what I would see at this theater. It was called the Bedlam. And uh, I just developed my own shows. And, and the thing was, is that I was one of the local artists in the theater. I was one of the composers and everybody had something to say through their art and through their puppet shows and their skits. And I felt like, you know, I have something to say too. So I'm going to, I'm going to use puppetry and, and do, um, do some kind of puppet show street performance sort of thing. And, um, my, my shows were a little more, uh, about hope and about like something about a more biblical stories. And, uh, I pitched it to the, um, to the theater. I was like, Hey, can I do this here? And she's like, absolutely. You know, just, we love controversy and, that sounds very strange and interesting, like a Bible story at an underground punk rock theater. So sure, why not? Um, and, and so then eventually I took that also to Brazil uh, for spring break. And while I was in Brazil, actually everything kind of changed. I took my puppet show into a brothel, did some shows, humanitarian work, orphanages, uh, street kids. I performed for some street kids who were sniffing glue. And I really started to see like, how the arts can impact people's lives in a, in a very loving, uh, life-changing kind of way, impactful, bringing a message of, of freedom uh, from different devices and, and you know, sanctuary and other things. So I came back from the, that, that trip in Brazil, a bit of a wreck in a, in a good way. And my, my dreams were kind of shattered. I felt like maybe I wasn't meant to just try to like make it as a composer, but what I really wanted to do was impact the world and make a difference and see some change happen and through the arts. And so I forewent my dream to be a film composer. I went into mission and humanitarian and, and the arts and developed this puppet show. And I traveled around the world for 15 plus years uh, with this marionette theater called the Suitcase Sideshow. And I met my wife in Germany, had some kids. Uh, she was from here, but we met in Germany and had some kids and um, was good writing some books. Um, just really felt accomplished to, to bring this little puppet show and see real change happening in, uh, you know, refugee camps or juvenile jails or squats, homeless shelters, uh, prisons, um, that kind of stuff. And that's really where my heart was and really is concerning the arts and bringing a, bringing a message of love and, and hope and joy into a place, except, it, you know, it's different than like, here's an elite performance that only the rich or the wealthy or the well-to-do can afford to go see. 
you know so i i love trying to target people and bring bring the art to the people um so anyway that fast forward a few quite a few years uh of course i i love this certain movie nosferatu it's a silent horror film getting back to my roots of why i got into film composition to start with um i went and saw it here in town at the parkway theater and i realized that this film was the music it was a modern score by a modern eight piece ensemble and i realized this score the or the the, the composer had a world view he had a perspective and like the vampire wasn't that dark he was kind of comically creepy you know or the the hero wasn't actually super strong it was kind of like Meh. and and i thought wow like when i first saw this movie it brought me to tears and it was like powerful and it had to, I, I just saw it in a different way and this music is showing it to me in a different way and i felt something inside of me say well then you do it you write music for it then then you do it and i was like me like what what can i do you know i don't i'm not a I, i've been traveling for 15 years and, you know i i knew no no musicians really i wasn't really in the scene uh my resume was street performer you know like who would want to be in my orchestra really and I I just created a comic book for this. And I, I don't know why. I'm not even like a big comic book guy. I just felt like I needed to share the story and this story. point of view in a certain way. And I wanted to do it through music, but I wouldn't just write an hour and a half worth of music for nothing, for no performance. So uh, my wife was actually quite annoyed with it because she knows I'm not a comic book guy. And I was just like full on diving into create producing this comic book with a an illustrator from brazil and and uh eventually i i pitched that comic book to a friend of mine that i knew in poland who had booked me a few sh tours with my puppets and she said hey you know we, we were talking about presenting this film nosferatu at her festival in poland and she, I, she said would you write music for this movie if if you know we showed it with your comic book and i said wow i don't know maybe but i don't have an orchestra and she then she said well we have an orchestra and you can use that orchestra if you do it so here i had like forsaken my dream for the sake of mission and humanitarian work and then uh my dream found me maybe in a different way but actually i it has, it has a little bit more purpose actually i mean i was able to share what inspired the music and share the the message just like back in that theater you know how all these artists would have a message whether it be you know like a feminist message or an anti-war message or a beer message or whatever the message was they all had a message and so now here i am able to share with through my my perspective on silent film with orchestra and so when i get back from poland and i did it there i had some a theater owner at the music box um ask me hey if, if you can do it in poland why can't you do it in minneapolis and i'm like well the answer is very simple i don't have an orchestra <laughs> i don't nobody would want to work with a busker as an orchestra guy you know and he's like well if you can find an orchestra you've got a venue so of course that put the fire under my pants and um, thousand phone calls later and, and 940 no's later, I get a 30 piece orchestra. And uh, we had our premiere per performance in 2018 for a sold out uh, weekend. And I don't know how that happened. It's just a miracle. And so that's, that's in a nutshell through the back door, I, I guess. I'm a rock and roll guy. I just kind of read a lot of books, figure it out, learn as I go, watch some YouTube videos and ask a lot of questions to people that I know who I think might know the answer and make it happen. That's it. Philip, I love your story. Like, oh my goodness. Like I am over here, like writing notes. Like I am so excited. Your story is amazing. Like, holy cow. Like you, 
started like with just a passion, but you didn't have like really any background and you're like, nope, skip the school. It's incredible. Like, I mean, that's, that's the American I, dream right there. I, I wish I went to school for all of this. I look at all these people like they, uh, that I work with, these musicians and they're in school for composition at the U or they're in school for, you know, their masters in violin. And I'm just like, man, would, wouldn't that have been cool? to actually be able to go to school for what I'm doing right now. <laughs> Absolutely. We actually just had a question come through on Facebook. Um, was this the year? Okay, hold on. Was this, was this the one moment when you felt like you could breathe? <laughs> which, which moment? <laughs> uh, I think that like, kind of like when you came back to Minneapolis and you found your 30 piece orchestra, did you finally like mm. feel like this is, this is my breathing space, at least for a little while. And then like your next project. You know, yeah, I guess like, I don't know. I, I don't know when I can actually breathe. For, uh, so th there's, there's a metaphor. So I, That's you know, okay. of course I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a person of faith. Right. And there's a story where Joshua walks into the Jordan river. And of course, Moses just parted the Red Sea. You know, and he raised his staff and, you know, he's got, you know, thousands of people watching him. And there's a lot of pressure on Moses at that moment. But but I, I feel more like Joshua, where Joshua walks into the water and the water is still not parting into the Jordan. You know, he's still walking and it's still not parting. And at some point, the water parts. And that's how it kind of how I feel like. Like I did all the booking and I got the, or the, the shows lined up and we're advertising it. And I still hadn't fully found my orchestra. And so, <laughs> and I didn't have a budget, you know, so it's a volunteer orchestra. Um, just okay. people who, who like believe in the show or the concept or uh, think it's a fun thing to do, you know? So, I mean, you can hire lots of people. There's people in town. You can put together an orchestra if you have a budget. But for someone who's just starting out like me and and tries to keep things at a rate that anybody can afford, not at like a $60 ticket baseline, like to go see Batman at the Orpheum Theater in June. Um, I mean, it's it's hard. It's really hard to do this. This doesn't normally happen. Um, but yeah, yeah, breathing is breathing is faith. You know, I breathe in faith. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Can I just, I just want to pull that section. I love that. That was beautiful. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much, friend. Um, okay. Two things. One, let's go back to those ticket prices because I was looking online and they're incredible, which makes me even more excited about your business and being able to sponsor this is that I know that I can bring my friends and I'm like, yeah, we're having a very, I feel like it's a very cultural experience. I feel like it's something that like you don't get to experience experience unless like you have the money to do that and mm. I'm really excited about that so could we do you want to do you want to let the audience know what the ticket line is or should we just have them maybe go over to the website yeah no it's it's a $25 ticket I think there's a a service fee or something too but $25 that's actually the highest we've ever charged for our shows um when we started out the first show was free and we've been going up since then I don't like I don't like that. I, I wish we could keep it at $15, $10, five, you know, but um, we also ran into issues like people don't take us seriously unless we have some kind of a price on it. Um, they think it's a joke or if it was too cheap, people would just buy a bunch and not show up or, you know, if it was free it just not. So, so actually, I mean, $25 is, is really cheap considering what this is. Because again, like you could go to see Toy Story at, with the Minnesota Orchestra or a no-name orchestra at the Orpheum Theater with the movie Batman. And that's starting $60. And so that's to see a very, it's a very similar show because it's not, it's a no-name orchestra, just live orchestra in a cool venue, which the Granada is also a cool venue with a, with a cool movie, which Phantom of the Opera is also a, a cool movie. So um yeah, it's 50% cheaper, over 50% cheaper, uh, hopefully allowing another demographic of people to access this kind of art. Yes. Okay, also I want to jump into, so you said that your orchestra is 
volunteer-based. Uh, could you like jump into that? And then also I'm really excited and I keep on saying that I'm sponsoring the event. Could you go ahead and elaborate like what that means? And then I know there's a few more sponsorships out there. Yeah. Um, so the yeah, it's a volunteer orchestra. And uh, I don't know how to explain that. Mostly people that uh, are my friends or people who are professionals that uh, just really love the idea. Um, some are lower, not, not quite so professional, but they're looking for a resume builder. Um, people, it's a great party. We have an insane amount of fun doing this. I mean, backstage, really, I mean, you guys have a nice show, I hope, but actually we're having most of the fun, I, I would wager. Um, so uh, people come into this, this orchestra for the community, for the networking. Um, the, the musicians that come into to this orchestra have seemed to come from such a varied uh, background in the Twin Cities. And even it's a very international orchestra. So typically we'll have people that come in from Poland. So I did my show first in Poland with Nosferatu. So I have people in Poland that come and like to be a part of my stuff now. And then I also have some players from Ukraine who are refugees or, or here for different things, different reasons, other countries like China and Chile. And so sometimes, so I, I spent a lot of time traveling as a busker over the last 15 years. So I met a lot of people uh, in those travels. So when I started this, I reached out to different people and I was like, Hey, you play industrial percussion. Do you want to be in my orchestra? Like you want to help me do some weird stuff with like, with an orchestra and I know you hit 55 gallon drums and that's not normal in an orchestra, but this isn't a normal orchestra. So I think it'll work. So I, I know these kinds of people from around the world too. So it's an international and local based uh, group. And it, we just, we just have a lot of fun. Um, yeah. It's just great. So uh, in terms of sponsorships, um, yeah, I mean, it does cost a lot of money, even though the orchestra is mostly volunteer based, the promotion, the venue, and a whole lot of other uh, other expenses, especially nowadays, goes to create a production like this for a weekend. So uh, I've started to offer this package if, pe if businesses want to sp sponsor this. Uh, they, they sponsor it for different reasons, like for the exposure or they believe in this kind of thing which I'll get into in a little bit, but um, we we'll, we put the businesses out on like in the program, social media, mentioning it from the stage, uh, some other things just to try to like, get, get, give those bit small businesses exposure. And, and like, because we're like a kind of a DIY orchestra local um, group, we're, I, I really try to use this space to help small business local uh, as well. So it's really not, to me, it's really not about like, hey, you give us a few hundred dollars, we'll, we'll you know, put out this thing for you. It's really not about that. It's like, hey, I, I just, I think I have a platform. We'll bring in seven, 800 people or so. I would love to help local small business with that platform as much as possible. So, yeah. I love that so much. And Sabrina, I love all of your questions right now. They are coming through like fire. Okay. She's asking and cost with a question mark, a free will donation or a set price. So, um, so my follow-up question with that would be, do you want to go ahead and like list off your different packages with the prices or do you, we want to, um, like set up like a website and then people can link on it. Um, maybe, maybe you just set, put my email in the chat or something. And if there's anybody yeah. that has questions about sponsorships, they can just reach out to me directly and, and I can, yeah. I can just, yeah, we can figure it out that way. Yeah. Cause I know that like when we looked at, uh, well, when I looked at your prices and like your different packages and what they included, it was different. So yeah. yeah. Otherwise we yeah. could spend like another 45 minutes here breaking that yeah. all down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Okay. In the beginning of our, I'm loving this. In the beginning of our interview, we were mentioning how we met and we met in a different atmosphere. I was not expecting to find you there. And I was so excited when I did, because I don't have any friends or any business owner like you. And that's why I latched onto you so quickly and so hard. 
<laughs> um, can we go ahead and break down what you keep on saying message and every artist has a message that they're getting across with the music and the screens. Could you break down like what your message is? Yeah. Uh, well, there's a different message for ev in every movie that I do. Um, so, I mean, I've got Nosferatu, which is a vampire film, and I've got the Charlie Chaplin film. And now we're premiering for the first time Phantom of the Opera from 1925, the, the Lon Chaney silent film, which is the original adaptation of the book. Um, and lo and behold, you know, like Weber made this movie stop not movie like the story famous right through the musical but but weber had a bent on the book uh whether you think re realize it or not uh he had i don't want to talk down on him at all because i mean he, he's a genius and he's a knight and of course he's like he's he made something incredible but he, he definitely saw himself as the phantom you know this tormented composer with a bit of a love interest in Christine or the girl that he customized that opera part for when he was writing the music. So if he saw himself as the Phantom, um, where am I sitting with the Phantom of the Opera? And the thing was is that I had done Nosferatu for a few seasons and Nosferatu has a very like strong, like, good versus evil light versus dark um self-sacrificial love uh message and i i see that the greatest selfless love uh example is jesus that's just how what i see that's what inspired that that music um and so i i would sh i like to share sometimes it's through conversation or through uh an interview or through um just like one-on-ones or, or from the from the stage like but i like i like to share what inspired the music and with nosferatu it's very much jesus like i mean like like you said the story is a little strange like how does a busker um who's got no experience in, with orchestra get his own orchestra and start doing these shows it, it to me it is very much a, a miracle so i would have to give credit where credit's due or i'd be a sellout and and so I, 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 I do that with Nosferatu and uh, people love it, actually. People love it because they get to see what's behind the music. And actually, I, I did the show one time with a full on like professional orchestra in York, Pennsylvania, and some of the patrons uh, were crying afterwards. And these were like big, big donors. They, they came for a private showing before the audience would come they were crying afterwards and the executive director of the theater said, Hey, one of our main patrons wants to meet you. And uh, so I came over and she's like, she gripped my hand. She's like 60 years old. And she's like, what compelled you to write this music? It's beautiful. And, and I had to tell her, you know, I had to tell her that like, well, you know, the vampire he represents everything that's evil and dark in this world and love triumphs over that and uh that greatest love that, uh, that ellen represents to me is jesus how she gives her life for for hutter who doesn't deserve her love um and then defeats it defeats the darkness you know she was crying and she just was like don't stop sharing this don't stop this is so important okay so so you have this um side of my my message and this side of my work and, and and for some people, that's liberating. And for other people, that might be a little offensive, which is a risk I'm willing to take. And uh, I had someone and other people have, have shared with me, they're like, you know what? You could be famous. Like, you're that good. You've given us a celestial experience. And you could be famous. But there's this, this Jesus thing. It's a little in the way. And I, I saw Phantom of the Opera at the Orpheum and I started to see it in this new way of like, hey, I'm not the Phantom. I'm Christine. You know, I'm this, I'm this artist, this aspiring artist. And I have this Phantom in my ear telling me, 
you could be famous if you just never see your true love again. And, follow me and join me, follow me, follow, let me steer you. And you know, and it's like that story that you hear countless times of like the, the artist who, and the, and the producer, you know, like the favors that are done, uh, the Me Too movement, um, any of that kind of yuckiness that happens behind closed, closed doors. This is what's going on between the Phantom and Christine. It's abusive. Uh, it's manipulative. Uh, it, it's violent. It, it, and it leads to loneliness. Uh, and in getting to the top, but then realizing that the top is full of death. You know, it's full of su those surprises that you didn't expect. And actually, like, your your dreams are killing you. Uh, and because you did it th all the wrong way, you did it full of compromise. And and so, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm like that. I'm Christine. I'm that one who's got these voices in my ears, these phantoms saying, you could be famous if you just, if you just, you know. And so I thought I I thought I'd write the Phantom of the Opera from instead of from the perspective of the Phantom, which I think is what Weber did. He kind of romanticized the Phantom, uh, he humanized them, and in a lot of ways it's true. You know, I mean, anytime a kid is going to be made fun of, he might grow up to be a monster. Don't do that. But um, but on the other hand, I feel like not enough not enough justice has been given to Christine, who's purely the victim in this story and and her and so like I, so i wrote all the music in this version of phantom of the opera i wrote it from her perspective um in the way that she sees the phantom and his arc and how he changes in her perspective over time so yeah i won't give any more like real spoilers on like the meanings and the messages and like what i did but um, and, and just, and it just, that's kind of what I'm doing. I love it. I have not seen the movie yet. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to follow along, but I am really, really, really excited to see it. And I don't feel that like you spoiled anything for me because I've heard, you know, stories of the Phantom of the Opera. So I'm still very excited to see this. Okay. I also want to touch on, you said that like you recreated the music to fit your, um, Oh, another, we just had a comment come through on Facebook. <laughs> um, so you said that you went ahead and you created music for your vision of how you see Christina or Christine and the Phantom. That means that all of this music is original to the way that you see it as an artist, correct? Like, uh, I know you said that. 90, times, like 90%. Of, yeah, 90% of it is original. There is some diegetical music. Uh, that happens that's from Faust, the opera. Um, it's just music that the that the Paris Opera House Orchestra is playing in, on screen at that moment. So we have to play that music. So that was kind of a challenge to actually write and edit the Faust opera, like the Jewel song and the spinning song to synchronize with a film that's 100 years old that has varying frame rates and is edited um not for the music but for the mo but for the story and and has actually had two different takes on it 1925 release and 1929 release nearly impossible i mean it was really difficult but anyway we're that's i'm getting a little too nerdy on you here right now um 90 percent of the music is original it's not the broadway musical um at all Oh, that's exciting. Okay, so then even people that have seen the Broadway movie and they're like, yeah, okay, we've seen the Phantom of the Opera. Like, it was good, but no thanks. This is going to be totally different. Oh, I'm super excited. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, I'm looking over here at the notes. Okay. I think that we covered everything, pretty much what we wanted to talk about. We want to talk definitely about the sponsors, about the creation and your message. Oh, Okay. I know this and you know this, but because we have people in our corner that go, oh, if you just like forget the whole Jesus thing, you know, when we invite our friends who are not Christians, are they going to be able to enjoy the storyline just as a viewer? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay. I hope so. I mean, 
yeah, I mean, not everybody in my orchestra are, are believers. Um, the the film is not Christian film. Uh, you know, it's in a it's not in a church. It's in a the Granada Theater. Um, yeah, I mean, I I just give I just go back to the place where I mean, I don't even like really call myself a a Christian artist. I don't like that word in the sense of like some of the political dogma that comes with it. Um, but I just see myself as another artist in the city who is still in that theater, who's got another uh, perspective on things, you know, uh, just like everybody's got something to say through the arts. Uh, I, I don't like to pigeonhole it and say, oh, this is a Christian thing because it's not. I mean, it it's for anybody. And I don't want anybody to think like that it's i don't know like you wouldn't you wouldn't see another artist who's get really into buddha say hey this is a buddha thing it would just be like exactly they're, in, they're into it like that's what you know like and and i just think of all like the the artists from the, the 70s who were in like the beatles were just the beatles you know eventually they got into a lot of eastern thoughts and eastern ideas but they were just the beatles you know and people would go and see the beatles you know um so I, I hope people can just come and enjoy a, a wonderful evening and be inspired and provoked and uh, be entertained and then walk away with like a fresh perspective and or 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 just have having been enjoy enjoyed the night, you know, and, and have received a gift at a of a cool show at a at a good rate. Um, at an amazing rate. Yeah. An amazing rate. <laughs> yeah. So I I don't know. I that question is is a hard question for me because yeah it is can be somewhat divisive but at the same time you know because there's some people who are struggling with this stuff i i, I hope our show gives them some clarity or it gives them some uh resolution you know that uh that they are loved and that there are uh you know i had some people say like if i would have known it was a christian composer i wouldn't have gone because i would have assumed it was bad and that's that's sad you know to hear people say that they would have just written it off completely just because it was like oh he's a, he believes in jesus therefore his music must be terrible i don't know that's a really that's it says something really bad either about that person or about the culture that we live in so i think i just like to maintain it like it's neutral it's just like hey see it and then you be the judge, you know? Um, and then I think people will walk away and be like, oh, I didn't expect that. You know, that was that was good. Oh, for fun. Fantastic. Thank you. I want to go ahead and I want to talk about your orchestra. So they're all volunteer based. I want to know who is your youngest player? Oh, um, well, it, it's hard. It varies orchestra to orchestra uh in in poland my, i have really young players in poland like 14 13, 15 um but they have a system in in poland where you can choose to go to a normal high school or you can go to a music high school that focuses on classical music and that's paid for like public school um and so a lot of kids in Poland grow up into that system where they're just like trained classical musicians. And by the time they're seniors in high school, they're like professional, they're great players, but then they go off and become a doctor or something, you know? And so it, it's, it's a great system for working with young players who are uh, just, just enjoying it and just aspiring. And uh, here I have some younger players, but not that many um but it just it varies orchestra to orchestra I, I love having players where i can um give them a chance you know uh but not expose some of them too much it kind of depends on the place and the player where in the orchestra they can slide in uh and not feel too much of that pressure if they're not ready for it but and then other times you know really push people so that they grow oh i love it Okay, then do you have an answer for who is your oldest? Answer for who is your oldest? <laughs> yeah, probably uh, one of my bass, bass singers. 
He's he's getting okay. up there. <laughs> he's he's I think he's in his seventies. So yeah, he's getting up there. Oh, I but, love that. But, okay, but we, we, honor, we honor him. He he's a trooper. He's a real tro- trooper. What's that? Oh, for sure. Who's your favorite? My favorite one. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Your favorite, your favorite in the orchestra. Oh. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, they're all wonderful. Mm, of course they are. Of course they are. Oh mm-hmm. my goodness. Okay. I am also wondering, do you think that your children will one day be involved in your show? Uh, they have been in my show. So that's something actually I really love doing because it's a local orchestra and local like produced musicians and everything. We have kids, a lot of us. And something I really value is bringing kids up in what you're doing so that they learn it and grab a passion for it. Uh, that's not always easy to do and there's like specific skills that are needed. But uh, so in the Charlie Chaplin film, it's not a horror film per se. I mean, I have a little bit of a bent on that film too and that's kind of horror leaning. But in The Kid, which is about a father and an orphan, Um, there's a really tripped out scene where he dies and has a dream and goes to heaven. There's a bunch of angels and demons. So I have a bunch of kids that come roaring into the audience as angels and other people too, not just kids, but like on bikes and musicians. And it's a really, really funny, lighthearted, like hilarious, like local community theater vibe, you know? where there's just a bu- ragtag group of people and a tall bike and animals. We had a dog with wings in Poland when we did it there. So yeah, my kids have been in it. They love it. They love the party. They love the food and the atmosphere. Um, it, it's really, really exciting when I can do a show that my kids can be involved in. Oh, I love that so much. Oh, okay. So then you said that you do not play an instrument, but is there an instrument that like you wish that you could play? Oh, I play the piano. No, no, no. Sorry, you do I'm play not, piano. Yeah, I'm not a band or orchestra guy, but that's where the piano is. That's just piano. Right, but do you wish that you could play like another instrument though? Oh yeah, definitely. I, I wish I could play the viola. That would have been my my go to. I'm really sad. Don't about know it. what that is. I'm gonna have to Google that. Well, it's it's lower than the violin. It's in the next register okay. down. Yeah, but any string. Okay, but it's kind of like a sister blessing. to a violin. It's like, like maybe it's like the creepy uncle that no one likes to talk about. Oh, that's awesome. That's why I love the viola so much. <laughs> Well, that's awesome. If you could, I wish I could play the cello or the violin. Um, yeah, I love the yeah. cello. Yeah. Right. Oh, my goodness. For sure. And then does your wife play or sing? Uh, yeah, she she has at different times played different instruments. Um, she, she's been in the orchestra for a couple years playing alto sax. And then I had I taught her to play the singing saw. And that would come out different choir moments, um, but the, it's great. She she we got four kids, and so she's quite busy, and I just kind of do what I do. But she, she also helps out in different ways, like with hospitality and other things. But um, yeah, I I wish she could be more involved, but she is just not always like on the front. But I I do hope. So the thing about the Phantom of the Opera is that it raises up a whole lot of questions um, when, when it comes to do with different themes in the story in, when it, uh, in terms of, of success or uh, feminism and uh, some other touchy subjects that I think actually my wife has a lot more authority to speak on. So I, I think she's, she's involved coming up a little bit more with the Phantom of the Opera um, maybe not as a musician, but in these conversations around the the plot and the music. So, yeah. Oh, that's super fun. Oh my goodness. That would be super fun. Especially as the kids grow older, like you said, she can be more involved in things. Oh, for sure. 
That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Philip, this has been super, super fun. I did ask uh, Facebook if they had any final questions. Sabrina here, she's been plugged in since the beginning. She uh, she plays seven instruments. And then also when you go read the chats later, she um, she has a couple maybe different ideas for you to go ahead and just uh, read on. So, yeah. Okay. All right. So that'll be super. Great. Absolutely. Yeah. Facebook, are there any final questions before we go ahead? And uh, say goodbye to our new friend, Philip. I'll give that a minute. Philip, I am super, super excited for February 10th at 7 p.m. I only say that time slot because that's when meticulous engagements is going. Okay. Um, otherwise, there there are some other time slots. Yeah. Yeah. So. The 9th, February, the Friday night and the Saturday. Are you, is, yes. are you guys going to the matinee or the evening performance? on the 10th uh we'd go to the evening performance okay so i know it fills up quick so i'm telling yeah. everyone to grab their seats as soon as they make the decision to say yes yeah so yeah. cool yeah awesome so yeah i am really excited that i get to sponsor this and i love your mission i love your story i'm really happy that we met and yeah february 10th 7 p.m what's the location again the granada theater which is in Uptown on Hennepin Avenue, right next to the old Apple store. And there's a parking ramp just around the corner that you can park at. Uh, it's beautiful Uptown area. It's coming back, <laughs> we hope, you know, but the Granada Theater is maintaining and doing well. Uh, and it's just a beautiful, beautiful theater. It's had a lot of different owners and the current owner has just really re renovated it well uh, and just, turned it into a wonderful event space and venue for for shows for salsa dance nights for quartet candlelit quartets um and then phantom of the opera so yeah it'll be a fun night yeah well well thank you so much and yeah i don't see any any other questions but that's okay so guys i will go ahead and i will let our new friend go thank you so much philip for being here okay well thanks for having me this has been great Absolutely. I am Amber McCarty with Meticulous and Big Engagements, where it is my business to know your business so I can help share it with the world. All right. Bye, friends. Let me.